Hallelujah. All praise, his glory, and honor to the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And honor and glory of his only begotten beloved son, the Holy Messiah, long live the king. SEL Israelites in the building, order Melchizedek, Hebrew Israelite Radio Network, sect of the Nazarenes out of St. Louis, Missouri. I'm your brother Malachi Maccabee. And uh, today, we're going to go over some more misunderstandings of Paul. Write a second Peter for me out, right? second Peter 3, 15 through 17. We started the last video off like this as well. You know what I'm saying? To give us a little bit of adjustments or whatever. But we started the last video off like this as well. And uh, this is some of the main uh, some of the main points that those that do not believe in the New Testament, they love to attack Shaul, right? Or who you read about is Paul in the New Testament, you dig? But we're going to run through just a few scriptures today, show his pedigree, show what he was about, you see? And then once we see that, see what he taught. And then once we see that, then we can get into the whole point of why are there false charges about the brother out here? What's all that about? Right? Why is such a big campaign to discredit Paul? You know why? Anybody with a little bit of history, research just a little bit, will know what a majority of the books in the New Testament were written by Paul. His letters, the epistles. Right. So they think, well, if the majority of the New Testament is wrong, then I really don't have to serve and worship and bow and follow the Messiah. I don't got to bow to the Messiah and follow him because Paul was a did major work in the New Testament. But if he's proven false, mm. then guess what? People feel they ain't got to come under the subjection of the Messiah written of in that New Testament. So we hear we defend the entire gospel. You feel me? We not even them brothers that believe partly in the New Testament. You got some of them brothers out here. They have put you right on the spot. You feel me? Do you believe in the return of the Messiah? Him coming with thousands of his saints out the sky with chariots, lights out. I done seen some of the most prestigious so-called educated Negroes fold, man. Claim they messianic. <clears throat> no, um. Oh, well, not really as the text says, you know, because I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a textual critic. I'm like, man, I ain't never ran to so many Negroes that were textual critics in my life, man. Wow. So, look, we're going to defend the whole entire truth, not parts of it, the entire truth. You feel me? And I would want somebody to stand up for me had somebody been slandering my name. And I wasn't here to bang for myself. Well, at least my writings and the work I did is uh, speak for me. You dig? So that's what we all we own. You feel me? Another example of people or the unlearned and unstable twisting Paul's letters to their own destruction. Right. Because you got to understand, like, <clears throat> these people are twisting his works and making the works that he's done for the Messiah mm -hmm. not valid. Yeah. You understand who he worked for. So if you denounce him, mm -hmm. you can denounce who he worked for. Yeah, that's the whole agenda. Exactly. You see the agenda? You see the agenda at play. If we denounce him, you feel me? And he was sent by him, then naturally we'd be denouncing the who he was following, the Messiah, who blinded him on his road to Damascus. See, we see the agenda. We see where the war is at and where it's aimed at. You understand? Let's read Hebrews 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3. Yes, sir. 15 through 17. Let me 15. Turn the slab on down. Verse 15. Yes, sir. An account that the long suffering of our Lord. In Savior is salvation. It's salvation. The long suffering of our master is salvation. Okay, let's read, bro. Even as our beloved brother Paul, mm -hmm. also according to the wisdom given unto him, mm -hmm. have written unto you, mm -hmm. as also in all his epistles, speaking to them of these things. Mm -hmm. In which are some things hard to be understood. This is Peter talking. Peter is an elder, but really to Paul, he was much older. Paul was around when Stephen got stoned, and he was a young man then. Peter and them had walked with the Messiah. Messiah had already been here, died, resurrected at the right hand of the Father. Back at the right hand of the Father, you understand? By the time even Paul got his hit, Shaul got his hit from the Messiah. So... This is Peter, the elder, talking about Paul the younger. You feel me? And say, look, he's been given wisdom. And some of the things that he says or, or writes, some of the things are hard to be understood. But he's not done. Let's keep reading, Hebrew. 
which they are unlearned mm -hmm. and unstable mm -hmm. rest. They that are unlearned and unstable, they twist. Rest mean to twist. They twist. Come on, Hebrew. As they do also the other scriptures. As they do, guess what? The other scriptures, which are what? Mm -hmm. What's called the Old Testament today. Mm -hmm. They unlearned and unstable in what's called the Old Testament, the foundation, the Tanakh. So they twist his writings. You understand? And that ain't just for the our people that's in church that's, that's butchering the hell out of Paul's letters, man. It ain't just them. You feel me? You got non-messianics who know better coattailing with the Christians because they figure this gives them an out in following the Messiah. Mm. When you know good and well, them so-called Christians ain't study these letters right here, man, and precept them with the Torah. You know good and well because they're scared of the Torah. You feel me? But out of nowhere comes somebody that, oh, no, yeah, we're going to stand up and believe in the entire book. And guess what our foundation is? That very Torah slash to not that the so-called Christianity church is scared of. You feel me? That's our foundation. You feel me? We can preach the gospel right out what's called the Old Testament. Mm. That's what Paul and them was doing. That's what Shaul and them was doing. All right, come on, Hebrew. Mm, real talk. Uh, until their own destruction. They twist his letters until their own destruction. You feel me? Twisting scripture. That's an agenda there. Whenever there's some type of twisting and shaving, there's an agenda. Huh? And you doing that to your own destruction. Let's read, out. Ye therefore, uh -huh. beloved, seeing ye know these things before. Right. Be were, uh -huh. lest ye also mm. be led away with the errors of the wicked. Watch out. Mm. Watch out. Come on. Fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace mm -hmm. and in the knowledge mm -hmm. of our Lord Yahweh Shah mm -hmm. and South Savior Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the Messiah. To him be glory, uh -huh. both now and forever. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Oh, our mind. And if it's a problem, read Isaiah 9, 6 to 8 about the son that will be born, that will be called God, everlasting father, the mighty God, the prince of peace. Uh, and the government will be on his shoulders, uh, which means the everlasting dominion and the everlasting kingdom would he inherit. You understand? So these things pertain to the Messiah whom we speak of. All right, drop this. Go to Acts 24, 14 through 15. Real quick, Acts 24, 14 through 15. And just here to clear the matter up, right? Yeah, our foundation is the Torah slash Tanakh, but we believe in the new writings as well, the New Testament. Huh? Because we know these things are fulfilling of what's called the Old Testament. Has everything been fulfilled in the Old Testament or in the, in the law and the prophets? Of course not. Of course not. There's still a day of the Lord that must happen, right? Israel must be regathered again, right? How that's going to happen? You know, it's going to be something supernatural, right? Huh? Let's read this Acts 24. So we're going to defend, just like I would want a brother or a sister to defend me had I been dead and somebody was standing up in his final hour, I was slandering me. But the works was there to prove that ain't what I was on. You understand? So we got Peter already vouching for Paul saying what, man, the unstable and unlearned twist his writings to their own destruction. Then he told us, guess what? Be word, beloved, lest you being led away by the error of the wicked. See, that's wicked. There's an agenda there of their scripture shaping, scripture twisting. Huh? But that's why we in court. You level a charge, we in court. So we got the Acts 24. Acts 24. Acts 24, 14 through 15, real quick. Acts 24, verse 14. Yes, sir. But this I confess unto thee. Uh-huh. That after the way which they call heresies. The way that they call heresies. And his main enemies wasn't even the Romans. Wasn't even the Greeks. His main enemies was his own people. As it is amongst our people to this very day. Right? This is an Israelite problem. Who's Mashiach? Who's the Messiah? It started off, it kicked off thousands of years ago. And, my, and how ironic, at the end of this thing, the same topic is back up on the table. Huh? 
Debate already been had. I know y'all want to see a debate already been had. You feel me? We ain't going to be spitting nothing extra than what these brothers were spitting. Proving who the Messiah is. I know y'all want to see some entertainment. Oh, y'all should debate this. Get on here and do this. Debate already been had. They already had their Mars Hill and their platforms back in the day where all the philosophers would meet up. That's in the Bible. You feel me? And talk doctrine. We already got the testimony of men that came before us. We just carrying on the flame. So we going to be spitting out that scripture. You want to talk about a debate. We're going to let Paul defend himself. All right, let's read. They call heresy his own people. Let's read. Huh? So worship I, the God of my father, uh -huh. believing that things which are written in the law of the prophets. Read that, read that last part again. Mm -hmm. Believe in what? Believing all things uh -huh. which are written in the law. Oof. And in the prophets. Oh, man. Who got a problem with that? What Israelite on the planet got a problem with an Israelite that believes everything that's written in the law and the prophets? Mm -hmm. huh? So, so far, he teaches the law and the prophets. Huh? A ain't that a good plus on his record? Mm -hmm. Y'all hating on Paul. Paul was a faggot. Mm -hmm. He was a white man, an Edomite. That's what I'm told pups be saying. Paul was an Edomite. I'm like, oh, man, y'all, you guys are no weights. Not lightweight, not phantom weight, no weight, man. If you, done, if, weight. if you didn't arrive at the conclusion that Paul was an Edomite, you have not studied to show yourself approved, no, buddy. Right. You have not. So far, he believes in the law and the prophets. What non-Messianic on the planet would, would disagree with that statement right there? What messianic brother in his right mind would disagree with that statement right there? I believe everything written in the law and the prophets. Okay, so if that's his mindset, if that's his mentals, why well, we got a problem with him 2,000 years later? Right. Could it be that you don't believe everything written in the law and the prophets? Right. That's what it is. Like, say you run up on a bro, y'all know how we... Uh, sit back, we get out this truth to everybody we run up on, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So you run up on somebody and he's saying like, yes, I believe in everything in the Old Testament mm -hmm. because you will meet a lot of Christian sanity type of individuals nowadays. That's majority, you feel me? But right. nevertheless, they be like, no, nah, I believe in everything in the Old Testament. You right. like, that, okay, kind, kind. Okay, yeah. right, right, exactly. So he's saying that, but you look 2,000 years later, and then folks got a problem with the brother. And these are Israelites. Huh? You know why? Because the majority of our belief about the brother has not been thoroughly searched out. You feel me? Most of it's just sound bites, man. You didn't heard somebody tell you that. Or, or looked at a passage and got thrown up or thrown off because he, the man had Roman citizenship. All right, come on, Hebrew. Let's get it. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And have... <clears throat> And have hope <clears throat> towards God, mm -hmm. which they themselves also allow. Right. That there shall be a resurrection. That there shall be a what? Thou shall be a resurrection. So, he so, so guess what? He teaches the resurrection. Ain't that a plus? Mm -hmm. Resurrection. That's something else that Paul or Shaul taught. Resurrection. All right, come on, Hebrew. That there shall be a resurrection of the dead. Uh-huh. Both of the just uh -huh. and unjust. All right, drop that right there. Let's go to uh, let's go to Second Corinthians, not Second Corinthians, First Corinthians six nine through eleven. First Corinthians six nine through eleven. Now trip off that. He teaches the resurrection. All right. He believes in the what's called the Tanakh or the Old Testament. Believes everything written in the Law and the Prophets. That's the first five of Moses and the prophets and all the writings that's attached to that. Paul was on record himself saying he believes everything written in the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Gets caught. That's evidence that go in. Now, with this brother here, Shaul of Tarsus, uh, the Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin, yeah, he believes that's his testimony in open court. He believes in the law and the prophets, all of it. All right? Well, let's see if he taught it. Let's read Hebrew, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Yes, sir. 
Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Oh, he also taught about the kingdom of God. Huh? And he knew the difference between the righteous and the unrighteous. Oh, okay, come on. Be not deceived. Be not what? Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Come on. Neither fornicators. Neither who? Neither fornicators. You need to know what fornication is, physical and spiritual. You understand? Physical fornication, read, your, read the list. Leviticus, the 18th chapter. Leviticus, the 20th chapter. If you want to see the word fornication itself, precept of 1 Corinthians 5, verse 1 and 2. And you'll see that was violation of Torah law. Men were taking their father's wives. Mm. That's violation of Leviticus, the 18th chapter. And Leviticus, the 20th chapter. That's abomination. You feel me? That's an unlawful lust. That's a sex crime. Huh? So he letting it be known unless you get a control of that flesh. Huh? And we talking about according to the script. Unless you get control of that flesh, you will not inherit the kingdom of the heavenly father. This don't sound like a man that was speaking and teaching against Torah. Hmm? And a spiritual fornicator, spiritual whore is anybody that's involved in the worship of another God. And that's just more than saying his name if your rituals are not biblical. If your worships, your ceremonies are not biblical. You feel me? Such as your Easter eggs and bunnies. On your December 25th creed, you're a spiritual whore. You're a fornicator. You're an idolater. That's a spiritual fornicator. Mm -hmm. And your temple's defiled. So he say, he teaches about the kingdom of God, but teaches that the unrighteous won't be any. And he say, be not deceived, neither fornicator. Come on, Hebrew. Nor idolater. Nor an idolater. Come on, Hebrew. Nor adulterer. Nor an adulterer. That's another form of fornication. Adultery. That's on the list. Come on, Hebrew. Nor effeminate. That's a soft man. That's a man with soft qualities. Mm -hmm. That's a man with soft qualities. Huh? A Don Lemon Negro. That, and that's how most y'all want y'all men today. You want them soft, well-reserved. Use his inside voice, get in touch with all his inner feelings. But an effeminate won't get into the kingdom, man. A soft man won't get into the kingdom. Men were meant to be men, masculine. All right? Leave the feminine for the women, the ladies. Mm, right. Leave that for the daughters, the sisters. All right? Neither effeminate, come on, Hebrew, nor abusers. Uh huh. Of themselves with mankind. That's a homosexual. Mm. An abuser of themselves with mankind or himself with mankind. That's a sodomite. That's a homosexual. You see that? These aren't getting into the kingdom. It don't sound like uh to me that Shaul was saying, hey, just believe in Christ and do whatever you want to do. Mm. Sound like this walk come with laws, rules. And if you want to know the meaning of these laws you're breaking, you got to go back to the Old Testament to get the definitions on them, don't you? Let's read Hebrew. Nor thieves, uh -huh. nor covetors, mm. nor drunkards, mm -hmm. nor revel revelers. Nor revelers. Come on. Nor extortioners uh -huh. shall inherit the kingdom of your house. You see that? So if you're on that list, you must repent. But these ain't getting into the kingdom. You see that? So what we know now, if he's saying these not getting in, these are sins. These are crimes. A sin is the breaking of the law of the heavenly father. You see that? So he's teaching you better keep the commandments. If you want into the kingdom, you better not be doing none of this right here. Keep the commandments. So, so far, this brother Shaul teaches the commandments. He not only says, I believe all of it, he teaches it. He teaches it. He teaches about the kingdom of the heavenly father and resurrection. Teaches it. Who still got a problem with him? Who still got a problem with him? What verse you at, huh? Verse 11. Go ahead. And such were some of you, uh -huh. but ye are washed, uh -huh. but ye are sanctified, uh -huh. But ye are justified in the name of Yahweh mm -hmm. and by the Spirit of our God. Mm -hmm. 
All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. And that's all things according to the faith. You think he's saying all things as in do whatever the hell you want? And how he's saying that when he just said these ain't getting in? He's talking about all things according to our faith. All things according to the commands we were given. Mm -hmm. But everything's not expedient. You know, or you need a breakdown on what that means. Something may be lawful for you to do, but not expedient for you. It may be lawful for you in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, you feel me, but you ain't getting nowhere doing it. It's bringing more harm to you than hurt. No, you ain't in violation of the law, right? But when does wisdom kick in, right? Example, you may know drinking wine is not a sin, huh? But you know you're going over Big Mama house. You know you're going over to holler at your mama. You understand? And your cousins and all them. Would you? With your big bad big bad Hebrew now, you know, show up at the dough flag and the wine, kick the dough in. This ain't no sin, but all that pig meat is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the wine is is lawful for you, but is it expedient to show up at your people house with a flag and a wine in your hand? You know they can't handle that. How about you show up as how you is, face shining, so we can rap scripture. Things may be lawful for you, but not expedient. And there's many other things, Israel. Let every man examine himself. It may be things that's lawful for you to do. Huh? And you thankful, like, woo! I'm thankful, that's all good. But ask yourself, is it expedient for you? And that's how the brother was getting now. He just was using wisdom, letting us know how to deal in a Roman society. Man, Rome was running it then. Israel wasn't running nothing. Rome was running it. Right? So just telling the brothers how to still stay righteous in a Roman-dominated world in Sodom and Gomorrah. Feel me? And knowing certain things about your God is lawful. You feel me? But is certain is it expedient for you? Huh? Is it bringing harm to you? And all because you just want to hold on to no dog because it's lawful. Right? But is it expedient for you? See, finish that verse off and we're gonna jump out. All things are lawful for me, mm -hmm. but I will not be brought under the power of any. That's right. I'm not gonna be brought under the bondage or the tutelage of none of these Negroes. You see, he was already brought up under a, a priest of a man of renown in Israel, uh Gamaliel. You feel me? And back then, your students were basically your servants. Students or your taught ones. You feel me? And then, yeah, things are lawful, but I'm not going to be brought under the bondage of nobody, man. Y'all can kill that, right? We bond servants to the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And that's just what it is. Take that to the bank, which you did. So, look, drop that. Let's get into this 1 Corinthians chapter 8. So far, we got Shaul teaching the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. We got him teaching resurrection. We got him saying he believes all things in the commandments, right? And teaching the commandments. Before we go there, go to Ephesians 4. My bad. I, Ephesians 4, 22 to 26. Another one of his letters. A, another one of his letters. Where is he off at? Where is he off at? Let's get it, Hebrew. Ephesians 4, verse 22. Mm -hmm. That ye put off concerning the form of conversations. Mm. The old man, mm. which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. You see that? He letting us know to be born again, renewed in spirit. You feel me? A transformation of one's mind. Huh? Born again or born from above. Huh? You live the rest of your life conformed to the will of the Heavenly Father and not to man. Born again. Same body, different mindset, different spirit. He walked different, talked different. You feel me? He was talking about being sincere with your brothers and sisters. Because if you corner, you can manipulate the law. Yeah. You feel me? And bring a man in bondage under you. Instead of being sincere with this thing. You see? So he said we got to be reborn or born again. And really, that's the whole title of being a Hebrew Israelite. You no, know, Israel means prince of the power. Hebrew means he... Who is crossed over. Huh? Or he who is passed over. Or he that's from beyond. So your whole title Hebrew Israelite meaning prince of the power 
from the past. A prince of the power who has crossed over. You feel me? From this realm to the next. Huh? Sound like being born again to me. Huh? You have crossed over. You live the rest of your life according to the will of the Heavenly Father and not to man. You see? So that's your whole title is being a Hebrew Israelite anyway. The whole Your whole title means being born again. A prince of God. You feel me? Who has crossed over from beyond. You see, you don't live by the desires of your uh, of what they call your lower self or the flesh. You feel me? You live by the spirit. You live up here in the holy of holies. You understand? All right, let's get this, Hebrew. All right. We in uh, Ephesians four. Ephesians four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was in verse twenty-two. Okay. Finish up uh, verse twenty-two. That was all that. I'm in verse twenty-three now. Yeah. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mm -hmm. And that ye put on the new man. The who? The new man. Come on. Which after Yahweh is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's right. Being born again. A whole a righteous mindset, in other words. That's what it's about. Not like Nicodemus. Do I do I crawl back into my mother's womb? This whole thing about being reborn or rebirth ain't got nothing to do with reincarnation either. Huh? There's a spiritual, a mental raising or resurrection. And then there's a physical resurrection out the grave. You feel me? Spirit over the flesh, that's a spiritual resurrection. You see that? Once you find out the truth and the light come on, that's a spiritual resurrection. Uh -huh. All right? Then we have a physical resurrection at the day of judgment. All right, let's read. All right. Verse 25. Yes, sir. Wherefore, putting away lying. Put away what? Put away lying. He teaching commandments, huh? Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's what lying is. Bearing false witness. Come on, Hebrew. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. That's right. Come on. For we are members of one of another. Come on. Be ye angry and sin not. You be angry. You can be angry, but don't use your anger as an occasion to sin. Come on, Hebrew. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Come on. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place unto who? Unto the devil. That's right. He can't come in. He can't sit down. Ain't no, you know what I'm saying? How you been? Ain't no shooting a breeze with him. Ain't no place for him. Right? Whenever he come tempting her, he need to be getting tossed clean. But whenever he get to come and knocking, he need to be rebuked. Can't sit her. Seat's taken. No place for him. All right, come on, Hebrew. Let him that stole steal no more. Now he's teaching, thou should not steal. If you was a thief, remember he said, a thief won't get into the kingdom? No, nah, you renewed now, right? You've been rebirthed. Let him that stole steal no more. Who say Paul wasn't teaching the commandments? Let's read, Hebrew. Let him that stole steal no more, uh -huh. but rather let him labor, mm -hmm. working with his hands, mm -hmm. that things which is good. Read on down to 28. That he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to be to the use of edifying. That's right. So no corrupt communication. That ain't a rough speech. You feel me? But what comes out your mouth is supposed to be for edification, teaching. You're not supposed to be Bernie Mac or Cat Williams in speech. Mother F, that is a drum roll of just all that. A drum roll of all that. You feel me? That ain't how it's supposed to be. That's corrupt communication. It's not edifying nothing. Right? It's a difference in that than you telling the youngster, hey, pull your damn pants up, man. Huh? Telling the sister, cover up. I don't want to see that. You feel me? That's not corrupt communication because your feelings get hurt. Corrupt communication is something that teaches to go against the Heavenly Father. Us talking in rude speeches sometimes or a little rough. It may ruffle your feathers. That's not corrupt communication. Why? Because it's edifying. What we speak is put out there to edify you. Not to entertain you. No, no. Uh, that's Bernie Mac. We leave that to Cat Williams and Bernie Mac and all them. And Bernie Mac ain't amongst us no more, but Cat Williams and the like. 
Huh? A reed shaking in the wind. Entertainment. We ain't heard for the entertainment. Let's read, huh? That it may minister grace unto your to the hearers. That's right. Finishing it on off. I'm just finishing it on down. Okay. Mm -hmm. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, mm -hmm. whereby ye are sealed mm -hmm. unto the day of redemption. That's right. Come on. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you uh -huh. with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, mm -hmm. tender, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahweh for Christ's sake have forgiven you. So what, what was he teaching that was anti-Torah? Mm -hmm. What he teaching that's against the commands of the Most High? He let you know these ain't getting in. Then he turn around and tell you, look, he teach those. You see? What's really the problem? I say there's an agenda that's being exposed. That's the problem. And in order for your agenda to work, you got to discredit the scriptures. You have to discredit the men that came with the testimony of Yahweh. Shah. Here's a problem. You can't do it. They've been trying for over 2,000 years. You see? And that'll never happen. Let's go get his pedigree. Let's go to Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians chapter 3, 1 through 5. Let's get his pedigree. Let's get his pedigree. You see? Watch the snake oil Israel. There's always an agenda. Always an agenda. So far, if I if, if I just walked up to you on the streets and ran you this man's pedigree so far, it'd be like he taught about the kingdom of the heavenly father. He taught about the kingdom of heaven. He believed in the resurrection, right? Uh, he taught, he said in his open testimony that he believed in everything written in the law and the prophets, and he taught the law and the prophets. So far, there shouldn't be an Israelite on the planet that got a problem with this man rap sheet when I bring him to you. I said, man, here's the rundown on this brother right here, man. Yeah, Shaul of Tarsus. That you never knew nothing about him. Never heard nothing about him, right? And I was like, no, man, he uh, believes everything written in the Torah. The Tanakh. He teaches the Tanakh the Torah. He teaches the commandments and all that. He believes in the kingdom of heaven. You see that? And what else he believe in? What else he believe in? Let's get into it. Philippians chapter 3. And let's see his pedigree. Believed in resurrection. Believed in the kingdom of heaven. Believed in the Tanakh and taught it. Mm. Let's see what else. Philippians the third chapter. Let's get it, bro. Philippians three. Where you want me to start it? One through five, my brother. Bad. Philippians three, verse one. Yes, sir. Mm. Finally, my brethren, mm -hmm. rejoice in the Lord, Yahweh, to write the same in the my bad. To write the same things to you. To me indeed is not grief, but for sake for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of who? Beware of dogs. Beware of dogs. That's that, that don't mean you pit bulls. A dog is an immoral man. You feel me? Someone that doesn't have a conscience. No discernment. You feel me? Come on, Hebrew. Beware of evil workers. Uh huh. Beware of the concision. The concision. I mean the, the, the cutting off. Come on, Hebrew. For we are the circumcision. So, oh, he teaches circumcision. This man teaches circumcision. Now, which he would have to be teaching it if he believed in the entire law and prophets. He, wouldn't he have to be teaching circumcision as well? Mm. Huh? But don't get mad because he sees the circumcision on a higher level than you. You feel me? Because he's on a higher level than you in the Torah. Come on, Hebrew. Which worship Yahweh in the spirit mm. and rejoice in Yahweh Shah Jesus Christ mm. and have no confidence in the flesh. That we are the circumcision that worship him. You feel me? That worship him in the spirit. You like, oh no, man. Oh, now hold y'all spot there. Let's go get another spot real quick while we on the topic of circumcision. Romans 2. Hold your spot there, Hebrew. Romans 2, 28 through 29. He just said, we are the circumcision. If we worship him in spirit, we have no confidence in the flesh. This is where a lot of brothers get, get uh, stumbled up at. 
No, see, right there. You see? But see, the problem was, you're skipping words. The word, the main word should have been confidence you was tripping off of. All right, what do you mean by we ain't got no confidence in the flesh? Because just like today, Shaul understood it was many wicked Negroes that were circumcised in the flesh running around here. What you mean, all oh, these niggas get a, a free pass? Been wicked? No repentance? And you think because you got your member chopped on that you guaranteed to get into the kingdom? Is that the spirit that we operate in? That's a question for my non-Messianic brothers. Are you going to uh, really arrive at the mindset that this man was saying? You ain't got to get circumcised, man. Later for the circumcision. Is that what he was saying or was he saying something totally different? Man? Come on, man. He just said, I believe, everything written in the law and the prophets. Then we go to example in Ephesians where he's actually teaching the, the uh, command. Now we get here, it's time to stumble up. See, right there. Can't take it. I mean, come on, brother. Wouldn't you want somebody to give you the benefit of the doubt you've been dead 2,000 years? Can we please keep reading them so we can understand? Let's read Romans 2, 28 through 29. And then see if we can find this concept in the Torah. Come on, Hebrew. Romans 2, 28 and 29. Verse 28. For he is not a Jew, uh -huh. which is one outwardly. Uh -huh. Neither is that circumcision, which is outwardly in the flesh. See, there he go. You see, right there. Circumcision is outward in the flesh, brother. See, Paul just going off. Keep reading, Hebrew. Mm -hmm. But he is a Jew, uh -huh. which is one inward. Which is one inwardly. Come on. And circumcision is that of the heart. Of the heart. Come on. In the spirit. In the spirit. Come on. And not in the letter. You see? Come on. Which praise is not of man, uh -huh. but of Yahweh. All right. Drop that. Let's go Deuteronomy 10, 15 through 16. Let's show that. Hold that spot. Hold that spot. We're coming back to that Philippians. Deuteronomy 10. Yeah, 15 through 16. We're going to navigate our way right on back. We're going to navigate our way right on back. What are you talking about? And he said, whose praise, notice he said, whose praise is not of man, but of the most high. Because someone in the flesh, and in this day and age, it better be only a woman. You feel me? Back then, they had traveling circumcision crews. You feel me? But in this day and age, it better be only a woman. But only someone in the flesh can see your physical circumcision. But only the most high know your heart. Right? What is circumcision of the heart? What did what was Shaul saying? Now remember, he believed everything written in the law and the prophets, right? It's not Deuteronomy. It's not Debraim, the boy yam. However you bruise want to say it. Is this not law? Is this not Torah? Well, let's read Deuteronomy 10, 15 through 16. Huh? Deuteronomy 10, verse 15. Yes, sir. Only the Lord had a delight in thy father to love them. Mm. And he chose their seed after them, mm -hmm. even you above all people, right. as it is this day. Mm -hmm. Circumcision, circumcised, therefore the foreskin of your heart. There go Moses right there. Moshe. Moshe. What did he just say? Circumcised the foreskin of your heart. Ooh wee. So could Paul just be simply saying, if you got a physical circumcision, but you ain't circumcise your mind heart is la'ab in hebrew meaning your mind your seat of intellect you understand could he simply be saying your fleshly circumcision don't profit you nothing if you ain't circumcised your heart man huh and if you say yeah he going off why you ain't saying the same thing by moses mm. ain't moses saying circumcise the foreskin of your heart what is that and why are we looking over that the problem was men were trusting that because they were physically circumcised that they were guaranteed a spot in the kingdom of heaven. And the brothers that hold the testimony of the Messiah said, oh, no, Jack, you got another thing coming. You think you finna mosey on into the kingdom of heaven with your inside looking like a graveyard? Mm. You can't be serious. No. Let's read, Hebrew. 
and be no more stiff neck. Uh huh. Mm. For the Lord your God is God of gods uh -huh. and the Lord of lords, uh -huh. a great God, uh -huh. a mighty and terrible. There it is right there. You see that? So the most high, Moses commanded us through the most high to what? Circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Commit, in other words, commit your mind to the most high. In other words, what? Be born again. That must take place first with the law of faith, the spiritual circumcision. Before you ever can be a servant of the Most High, man. Right? And you circumcised today ain't got nothing to do with you keeping that commandment. Your parent decided to keep that commandment for you. You circumcised. That means you kept a law that you didn't have no control over. Didn't take much faith for you to keep that up. It didn't. Your father or mother had you circumcised on the eighth day. And you run around here bragging as if you circumcised yourself. Man, ain't none of y'all Abraham. Abraham circumcised himself. Then he circumcised his son and the rest of his servants. Now, nah, you bragging about a circumcision you had no control over. And think the most high really tripping off y'all like that, man. Are you done with that? No. Okay. Which that regarded up. not persons, nor take up reward. Mm -hmm. yeah, jump on back to the Philippians 3 and read that verse again about we are the circumcision. Because remember, you feel me? In the spirit and not in the letter, whose praises are the most high and not a man. That's the real circumcision. That's the circumcision Abraham had before he ever was physically circumcised. And that's what you must have. That come by hearing the word. But hearing and believing the word. All right. That's that faith. Now you're ready to keep the commands of the heavenly father. Let's read Philippians 3. Y'all, what is it? Philippians 3 and 3. Yes, sir. For we are the circumcision uh -huh. which worship God in the spirit. Now, are we lying? Didn't we just read that in Moses? Come on, Hebrew. Which worship Yahweh in the spirit uh -huh. and rejoice in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And have no confidence in the flesh. Don't have no confidence. Meaning just because you're physically circumcised don't guarantee you a spot in the kingdom of heaven. Which is coming to earth. That's why it's no confidence. Because it can't get you salvation. Many brothers that circumcised them, nuts going to be roasting in the lake of fire. For all eternity. That's why it's no confidence. Is she saying don't do it? Of course not. Of course not. But if you're doing it, but don't got the spiritual circumcision, which is the faith and the only begotten of the heavenly father, that ain't going to save you. Come on, Hebrew. Mm. He say, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, mm -hmm. if any other man think of that he have whereof he might trust in the flesh, uh -huh. I more. Now, now, Shaul, now you want to bring him on out. You done brought Paul on out now. He like, if y'all wanted to get into a, a a proverbial pissing contest, if this was that was about, right? If this was about bragging, about who has something to brag about, if y'all want to get fleshly, Paul like, look, I can get fleshly real quick and brag. Now nah, he about to brag a little taste. Come on, he wrote. Mm -hmm. He say, he says, Circum circumcise the eighth day. Come on. And of the stock of Israel. Come on. And of the tribe of Benjamin. Come on. And Hebrew. And the Hebrews. And Hebrew of what? Of Hebrew. Of Hebrew the Hebrews. Of the Hebrews. Come on. As touching the law. A Pharisee. Now he just gave his pedigree right there. He said he was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. Shots fired at you tore pups. Mm. Huh? Of the stock of Israel. Right? Of the tribe of Benjamin. Add this to Paul's rap sheet. He don't only believe in the whole law and teach the whole law and believe in the resurrection and the kingdom of Yah. He a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. Mm. If I was running this down to you and you never heard of this brother and you a conscious Israelite, you know what the majority of y'all going to say? If not all, I would love to meet that brother someday, man. I would love to meet that brother someday. Rap sheet sounds superb. Man. 
Let's read, my brother. Concerning zeal, uh -huh. persecuting the church, mm -hmm. touching the righteousness which is in the law, Ooh. blameless. Come on, because Paul used to be a persecutor of the way. You see? And he was is and he's an Israelite, but he was persecuting other Israelites. Because of what? Our belief. And y'all look in the Israelite movement today and say, why? Or every, is everybody divided? And our question to you is, when has everybody been united? Since when? Since when? Israel ain't been a nation. Israel ain't been a nation at all since Solomon. Yo. Israel ain't been a nation at all since Solomon. Speak Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Israel ain't been a nation since Solomon split the kingdom through his what? Through his sin and wickedness. So what since when everybody been united? It ain't what it is. Come on, Hebrew. Read on down to that verse 8 and we're going to jump. Okay. Verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. You say, look, everything that y'all bragging on, I counted as loss. Because what all that mean if we didn't believe in the anointed that was sent by the heavenly father. You can't even brag you was Israelite. And that's what he was just doing right there. I was circumcised the eighth day tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Pharisee. Huh? But he said, look, I count that loss. Let's read Hebrew. Yeah, doubtless. And I count all things but loss mm -hmm. for the ex for the excellence, excellency mm -hmm. of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Mm -hmm. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, Woo. that I may win Christ. I yeah, I was go to Romans 11, Romans 11, 1 and 2. He teaches the circumcision, mm -hmm. Romans 11 and 1. He teaches the circumcision. Mm -hmm. He a Hebrew Israelite, tribe of Benjamin, believes even in the spiritual aspects of circumcision. Huh? Believes in the kingdom of heaven, the resurrection, believes in the Tanakh, and believes and teaches the command. Who, many, who got a problem with the brother still? Right. How many of y'all brothers can straight count all y'all accomplishments that y'all made? Say y'all been working 40 years and got all these accomplishments. How many of y'all can straight talk to play somebody like, oh, man, that's dumb. I ain't even worried about that. Yes. Come on, man. Y'all want to buff yourself up. Yeah. That's the whole point. To sit yourself in the Messiah seat. We know the aim. We know the end game. It's to sit yourself in the Messiah seat. You know what I'm saying? And take them out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you uh, get at the people that work for him, that go hard for him, to denounce his name. Huh? He sent out his soldiers, and I'm one of them. Let's get it. We get her done. Romans 11 and 1. Romans no, 11 and 1, real quick. You say, I say then, have Yahweh cast away his people? Yahweh forbid. Yahweh what? Yahweh forbid. Yahweh forbid. Come on. For I also am an Israelite. There he go again, huh? saying he an Israelite. Hmm? He, there he is again, saying he's an Israelite. Come on, he broke. Of the seed of Abraham, uh -huh. of the tribe of Benjamin. See that drop there? Let's go to Romans 9. Romans 9, 1 through 4. Right. Romans 9, 1 through 4. <clears throat> you see, so his pedigree is he an Israelite. Taught commands. Taught the circumcision. You understand? Understood about the spiritual aspects of it and how men can be reckoned righteous without having a physical circumcision. You say that's blasphemy. How when Abraham was reckoned righteous in his uncircumcision. In Genesis 15, it was his faith that the Most High declared him righteous. And he was uncircumcised still. See, these are aspects. Remember, he said, I believe in the whole thing. Not parts of it. The whole thing. And because he's examining a part of it that shows Abraham was the father of many nations. And the most I gave that to him on a belief and a promise that was made. Mm -hmm. Not based off no work that was done. Why did the most I forgive David? For some work that he did? No, because he was showing him grace and mercy, man. You see, so certain things he was saying when he was like, man, no, nah, that would happen without work. That was a gift. Lord did it because he wanted to give it to you. It wasn't because you was righteous. It because he wanted to give it to you. Now what you going to do? You going to walk like you worthy or not? Let's read Romans 9, 1 through 4 real quick. I, 
I say the truth in Christ Yahweh Shai. That's right. I lie not. Mm -hmm. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ruach, mm -hmm. that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow mm -hmm. in my heart. For I could wish that myself was accused, a curse, a curse mm -hmm. from Christ, from my brethren. From my who? From my brethren. My brethren, come on. My kinsmen, come on. according to the flesh. Now before, he just said, I can wish I was a curse, a cut off. From the anointed for my brothers. In other words, Paul was saying, I wish I didn't get it so the nation can get it. I got this truth, but I wish I was cut off so my brothers, according to the flesh, can get this light. Man. Moses did the same thing. Lord, whack me. Spare them. You feel me? Here go Paul again, acting out a character in the Torah. See that? Moses did the same thing. Mo Moshe was like, look, Heavenly Father, whack me, spur them. Mm. Shaul just said the same thing. I wish I was cut off, separated from Christ, the Messiah, Hamashiach, Yahoshua. For who? My brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Who are who? Let's get it, Hebrew. Who are Israelites? Who are who? Who are Israelites? Paul's brother and kinsmen, according to the flesh, are the Israelites. Come on, Hebrew. To whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption is the redemption of our bodies. Hold your spot. Romans 8, real quick. 22. Romans 8, I believe it is. 22. Let me say the adoption. Romans 8, verse... 22, 23. There it is. 22 and 23. All right, I got Romans 8 and 22. Mm -hmm. It says, For we know that the whole cre creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. That's right. And not only they, mm -hmm. but ourselves also. Yeah, we groaning too. Feel me? Nature is in birth pains. We groaning too. Let's read up. Which have the first fruit of the spirit, uh -huh. even we ourselves grown within ourselves. That's right. Waiting for the adoption. Waiting for who? Waiting for the adoption. The adoption. Come on. To wit. That mean which is. Come on. The redemption of our bodies. The adoption is the redemption of our bodies. What is that? Resurrected as an immortal power. Immortal. Resurrected. Everlasting life. Right now, when you go back to Romans nine and say to the Israelites belong the adoption, huh? Why? Because we the sons of Elohim. Sons of Elohim. You see that? The adoption belonged to the Israelites. You say adoption? Yeah, we must be brought back to our original power. The original plan for us was to live, to live as the in the likeness and in the image of the heavenly Father. The heavenly Father supposed to look at His creation and see a reflection of Himself. He made man to be immortal. You feel me? After his own image and eternity. Mm -hmm. You ain't nowhere near your full potential. Nowhere near it. So unto us belong the adoption. Let's read Hebrew. It says back to uh back to uh Romans 9, mm -hmm. verse 4 again. Who are it who are Israelites mm -hmm. to whom pertaineth the adoption right. and the glory uh -huh. and the covenant. And the covenants. That's old and new. Mm -hmm. The Israelites, the glory, the adoption. Come on, Hebrew. And the giving of the law. Ooh, beautiful. Come on. And the service of Yahweh. So if, the, if, if we, if belong to us, the service of Yahweh, that means we are his servants. We are. Come on, Hebrew. And the promises. And the promises. The main promise is the kingdom of heaven. And whose name's on the gates of the new Jerusalem? I know your food just went sideways in your belly, James White. I know it did. Huh? All that belonged to them? The Israelites? Yeah. All that. Let's read, brother. Whom are the fathers, uh -huh. and of whom are concerning the flesh, mm -hmm. Christ came. You see that? As concerning the flesh, the Messiah came for them Israelites. You dig? So, so far, he's a Hebrew Israelite, believes in the kingdom of heaven, believes in the resurrection, believes in the entire Tanakh, and teaches the command. Circumcised the eighth day. I believe in the spiritual circumcision. Oh, we, you still got a problem with this man? 
you still got a problem with them. Let's drop that. Let's go to Romans 3 real quick. Romans 3, 30-31. More aspects of the law. Because what they teach today, we under grace. We ain't got to keep the commands. I have faith. We ain't got to keep the commands. So my question is, is this something that Paul taught? Because that's what they throw on them. They throw on them. Well, he didn't teach the commands of the Heavenly Father. He the reason why these Christians run around here believing they can eat pork and they always pull out grace and faith as in license not to keep the commands of the Most High. Mm. But my question to you is, is that biblical? Is that what he actually taught? Romans 3, 30 to 31. I, Romans 3, verse 30. Yes, sir. Seeing it is one good. One who? One good. Uh -uh. My, hold up, my bad. Seeing it is one God uh -huh. which shall justify the circumcision by faith uh -huh. and uncircumcision through faith. He's justifying both with faith. You feel me? Through faith and with faith. But he's justifying both. Let's read, Ebro. But we then... Uh -huh. My bad. <laughs> do we then make void the law through faith? Uh -huh. Yahweh forbid. Yeah, we establish the law. No, just because you got faith don't mean you void out the law. Scripts say establish it. That's Paul. That's the book of Romans. Even though faith is going to justify the circumcision and the uncircumcision, does that mean void the law out? God forbid means no. That ain't too hard to figure out. He said, yea, we establish the law. So the doctrine that they got in the Sunday church when I mean, you say we're supposed to be keeping the commandments, we're supposed to be keeping the laws of the Heavenly Father, right? To the best of our ability. And they say, no, we're under faith. We're under grace. We're under faith. You understand? You know that ain't got nothing to do with what's in the scripture right here. Drop this. Go to 1 Corinthians 9 real quick. 1 Corinthians 9 and 21. Hey, check that dough for us, huh? 1 Corinthians 9 and 21. Check that real quick. Just because there's faith don't mean you void the law out. Just because there's faith don't mean you void the law out. That ain't what's happening. So who, so what law and whose law are we under? You understand? 1 Corinthians 9, 21. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 21. Yes, sir. To them that are without law as without law. Come on. Being not without law to God. Right. But under the law to Christ. We under the law to the Messiah. Not Moses. So when you see in all the, the, you know, the laws of Moses in the book of Acts and all that, all the disciples are saying is there's a new sheriff in town. Mm. Huh? There's a new administrator. And you as people of America, come on now. Ain't there a new sheriff in town? Didn't Donald Trump or Donald Trump, just the president elect, ain't he about to take over as president for real in a couple days? Ain't it the same laws, but a different administrator? Y'all keep running Moses, and we like, no, nah, Jack, we before Moses. And now after Moses was a schoolmaster. You see? Huh? But now the bar has been raised. You can no longer manipulate the letter of the law and say, oh, no, brother, I didn't steal from you when the whole time you was thinking about it. See, Christ is the law now. You understand? We under the law to the Messiah. Right? We're under the law to the Messiah. So every man must gauge his conscience. No longer could you say, oh, no, I ain't commit adultery when you was thinking about hitting his whiz the whole time. Getting at his woman the whole time. Christ gonna judge them thoughts. The Messiah sent by his father gonna judge the thoughts of man. Why? Because you're supposed to be reborn, remember? Renewed in the spirit. See, you still trusting in flesh because ain't nobody caught you in the letter doing it. And never thought, man, there's a worse judgment coming for my thoughts, man. And you never checked that. If left unchecked, guess what's going to happen? If left unchecked, you don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be a problem. So, so far, we got the man establishing law, right? And he got more specific under the law of Christ. Hebrews 7, 11, and 12 real quick. Are you done with that? Hebrews 7, 11, 12. You want to finish that verse out? Yeah, finish that whole verse, 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. It said that I might gain them that are without law. Mm -hmm. Say Hebrews 12. Yeah, Hebrews 7, 11 and 12. 
So he just said, not being without law to God, but under the law to the Messiah. You feel me? He's the high priest. He's the chief administrator. He's the king. You feel me? He's the high priest. He's the top prophet. He's the master teacher of the Torah. We don't look to none other for the breakdowns. You feel me? Then the son of the heavenly father. Like where you at? Hebrews 7, 11, Hebrews and 12. Hebrews 7, verse 11. Show you a different administration, the new sheriffs in town. All right, one that's greater in authority. Let's read, brother. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, mm -hmm. for under it the people received the law. There you go, right there. Come on. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek, uh -huh. and not not be called after the order of Aaron? See, come on. For the priesthood being changed. The priesthood being changed. It ain't a non-messianic on the planet that can say that's a lot. Because if that's the case, you need to tell me which high priest is officiating in what temple. You need to tell me what high priest is officiating in what temple. You understand? If the priesthood ain't been changed. Because the show ain't up running. For the priesthood being changed. Let's read out. For the priesthood being changed. Mm -hmm. There is made a necessity a change also of the law. See? So the priesthood has been changed. There's a new priest in town. There's a new high priest. Huh? And he's coming after that ancient vibration or order or rule or law or government of Melchizedek. Just like with Abraham. Genesis 14. He ran to the king and priest of Jerusalem. He came out and broke bread with him and drank wine. Same thing the Messiah did at his last, what they call his last supper. You feel me? Last time he ate with his disciples, what did he do? Broke bread and drank wine. He's the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, as prophesied in Psalms 110th chapter. You see? So under the law to the Messiah, the priesthood being changed, there's made a necessity a change also of the law. Mm. Mm. Jump down to verse 17, read through 22. Right. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. For he testified, Thou art a priest forever mm -hmm. after the order of Melchizedek. Yahoo, let's read. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandments mm -hmm. going before for the weakness uh -huh. and unprofitableness. And unprofitableness thereof. We say there's a disannulling of the order of Aaron for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Like, oh, y'all joining? Well, brother, if it was everlasting, why ain't around now? If the order of Aaron is everlasting, where is that? Why it ain't around right now? You see? Why I can never take away sin? Let's read, my brother. For the law made nothing perfect. Come on, talking about the government of Moses, the order of Aaron. Come on. But the bringing in of a better hope did. Come on. By the which way draw nigh unto Yahweh. And in as much as not without an oath, he made he was made priest. Mm -hmm. For those priests were made without an oath. Exactly. We're talking about the order of Aaron, meaning the most high didn't go on oath. He didn't swear and didn't say, I swear and will not repent. You feel me? Most high did that about this Mikhail's a dead order. Lord has sworn and would not repent. Thou art priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek, meaning the king of righteousness. The order of Aaron, the most high didn't go on oath for them. You feel me? He didn't swear on record. Let's read, Hebrew. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, the Lord swore and I will not repent. That's right. Or turn away from this. Once he put it out, He'll never turn away from it. Come on. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Come on. But so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. That's what we were talking about. The priest forever after the order of Melchizedek is Yahweh Shah Mashiach of Nazareth. That's the high priest after the order of Melchizedek currently sitting at the right hand of the Father as we speak. That's who administration and government we are under. That's the law that we are under. You feel me? And he taught the commands. You dig? But raise the bar on us. No longer could you manipulate the letter of the law and think you was going to get away with it, man. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
You feel me? We were called to be sincere in our actions and how we deal with each other. And love our brothers and sisters. All right, you done with that? Yeah. That verse 22? Right. Let's go to Romans 6. Because we did Romans 3, 30 through 31, and said, being the most high going to justify the circumcision through faith and the uncircumcision by faith do we void out the law because there's faith. Like y'all claim today, void the law out. I got faith, boy. I don't got to keep no commandments. I got faith. Be spitting all over the place. <clears throat> but the scripture said, we established the law if we got faith. If we believe in the most high, then we are ready vessels to do his commands. What you talking about? <clears throat> like Abraham, he had faith. And whatever the most high told him to do, he ain't bad eye at it. Let's get it done. <clears throat> Even when it came down to cutting himself. Abraham circumcised himself. You ain't never circumcised yourself. You see? So be careful claiming you got the faith of Abraham. Because he was told to offer up his child. Huh? His faith was proven. Prove he had belief. Whatever he was commanded, he did. You Negroes in church throwing all that hog down your throat, claiming you got faith and claim that's a reason for you not to keep the command. Faith is more of a reason for you to keep the command. Because you really believe, right? Let's read Romans 6. This one about grace. I got grace. I got grace. Roman, I don't got to keep the commandments, brother. I got grace. You hear all that? So let's smash that out the water. Romans 6, 1 through 4, and then jump down 14 through 16. And we just heard to clear up all the misconceptions about the brother Paul. Every once in a while, we're going to be doing videos like this, which are add-ons to videos we did years ago. You feel me? We just constantly refining the sword, right? These ain't new scriptures to us. We've been going over them. We just constantly refining. And if anybody new listening, take notes. That way you'll know how to properly defend this thing, man. You did? Romans 6, 1 through 4. What did it say, y'all? Romans 6, verse 1. Uh -huh. What shall we say then? That's a question. Because he know what he just said took you left field. Because if you ain't studied up as him, it's like you trying to read the law book. And you're not a lawyer or practicing to be one. Right. Huh? Or just getting yourself familiar with the terms. Right? You don't know nothing about legalese. So how are you jumping in the middle of a law dictionary trying to correct somebody? Huh? Paul knew what he said was going to make people ask questions. So what shall we say then? Come on now. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's, that's, that's a good question. Do we continue to sin because we under grace? That grace may abound? In other words, can the, the uh, Negro Christians claim they don't got to keep the commandments? They can stay under sin because after all, sin is the violation of the commandments, right? Can we continue in sin that grace may abound? Come on now. Yahweh forbid. That mean no. Come on. How shall it say? How how shall we that are dead to sin mm -hmm. live uh, live live any longer therein? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Ain't you dead to your old life? Ain't you dead out there in them streets? No. Ain't ain't you dead in the flesh? How shall we, huh? even though we've been given grace, continue in sin? How shall we continue therein because we're under grace? Which simply mean we ain't killing violators. Violators ain't being sent to the judgment. That's what that means. Grace is not a free badge to sin. Grace is you got time to come up with that money before we come cut that light bill off. That's what grace is. You get a grace period. You get a little mercy. Huh? Before the judgment come down. Maybe you'll learn your lesson. Let's read, brother. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ mm -hmm. were baptized into his death. You see that? If you down with this man, you a dead man walking. We knew that signing up. Dead men walking. If you are baptized into the Messiah, you're baptized into his death. Mm.
because the world don't love him. All right, let's read. Huh? Therefore, we are burned, we are burdened, we are burdened with him by baptizing to death. We are buried with him, right? By baptism into death. Come on. That like as Christ was risen up from the dead uh -huh. by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We should walk in what? In newness of life. That's the whole point. And if you ain't even doing that, even on a physical level of being baptized, if you coming up and don't have no, no understanding about walking in newness of life, walking in the spirit, keeping the commands in your mind, you just a wet sinner. You might as well went swimming. All right, jump down to 14 for me, right, 14 through 16. For sin shall not have dominion over you. That's right. For ye are not under the law, uh -huh. but under grace. You see that? So you say, see right there, say we not under the law. But under grace, but what is sin? Sin is what? Transgression of the law. So breaking the law won't have no dominion over you. All right? For ye are not under the law. What? But under grace. So what is it that won't have dominion over you? Find that out, and that's the law that you've been keeping. Sin is a law to those that keep it. All right, read, Hebrew. What then? Uh -huh. Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, come on, but under grace, come on. Yahweh forbid, God forbid. Mm, the highest esteemed of no. You hear that? First John three and four is your definition for sin. Second witness it with Romans four and fifteen, where there is no law, there is no transgression. Mm. Uh, whoso committed sin transgresses also the law, but sin is the transgression of the law. That's New Testament. You see that? That's what sin is, the transgression of the law. So what is it that won't have dominion over you? What law are you not under if you're walking in the spirit? You're not a servant to sin. The law of sin. Hmm? He wasn't telling you to be rebellious. He was telling you to walk in the spirit and you won't give no provision to the flesh, which is your carnal fleshly mind. Which sin is the inspiration there. You're not under that law. You're not under that law if you walk in the spirit. You're not a servant to sin. Because sin is a law to those that keep it. You feel me? Go ahead, Hebrew. Verse 16. Uh -huh. Know ye not uh -huh. that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. Uh -huh. His servant ye are to whom ye obey. You the servant to whomever you obey it. You see that? Whoever you obeying, you the servant of that man or that God. You the servant to whomever you obeying. Huh? Now, if you obey, if you sitting around here going on Easter egg hunts, going on a trick or treats, you feel me? Participating in Christmas, New Year's, Fourth of July, believing you were Gentile, believing Christ was a white boy and loved everybody. Mm. Huh? Drinking the eggnog, singing the Christmas trees. Mm. Huh? Guess who you serving? Who you been yielding your members to? You've been yielding your members to a false God with false instruction. You've been a servant of sin. You the servant to whomever you obeying. That's how we know what God you worship. Huh? What rules you follow? Finish that off, right? Mm. Whether of sin unto death mm -hmm. or of obedience unto righteousness. All right, drop that. You done with you done with that 16? Yeah. All right, drop that. Let's go hit uh let's go hit Galatians 6 real quick. Galatians 6, 13 through 16. Another aspect of the circumcision, real quick. We knocking them all down. Another aspect of the circumcision. We had, we even got to get into Shaul teaching about feast days. Oh my God, this man's a Hebrew Israelite. Teaches about the kingdom of heaven. Teaches about the resurrection. Believes in all the Old Testament, which is the Tanakh. Teaches the commandments. Huh? You can't throw the free case on him that he taught grace and faith as an excuse to void out the law. We just went over that, right? He taught circumcision, physical circumcision. And the spiritual aspect of it. Wow. 
All right, well, let's get this Galatians 6 real quick. Galatians 6, 13 through 16. Verse 13, Galatians. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. He's going over the hypocrisy of men that want you circumcised. And they believe in that just because they circumcised that uh, they guarantee the spot in the kingdom of heaven, which is which couldn't be the furthest from the truth. All right, let's read it, bro. But desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. That's the whole thing. They just want to glory in your flesh, but they really not gonna put their neck on the line for this truth. You want to run around talking about who circumcised, but won't nobody spill no blood for the gospel? See hypocrisy. You circumcised, but you a violator of the law. Hmm. How, what, is, what good is your circumcision doing? They like the brothers that be fringed up all the time, but in pure violation of the scriptures. Right. What is you looking on this fringe and reminding you to keep the law doing for you? All that profits if you are not a transgressor of the law. But if you a violator of it, guess what? Your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Mindset. And that's the problem. We was leaving that out. We was thinking we just get circumcised in flesh and do whatever the hell we wanted and believe whatever we wanted and say whatever we wanted. As long as didn't nobody catch me. Huh? But the boy been raised with the belief in the Messiah. And guess what? That spirit going to convict that conscience. You won't even be able to sleep. Hmm? So keep playing around if you want to. This is not a game, man. This is dead serious. Go ahead, finish, finish that off, he broke. Yeah, Galatians 6. Yeah, Galatians 6. Go ahead. We ain't started the church. And you did 13. If you was in 13 already, wasn't you? Galatians 6 and 13. For neither they themselves. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, I. They say, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, mm -hmm. but desire to have you circumcised mm -hmm. that they may glorify in your flesh. flesh. <laughs> Come on. Glorify in your flesh. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Christ Jesus, mm. but whom the world is cert is wow. is certified oh, is crucified. My bad. Start, it over, said, start but, it over, Hebrew. Start it yeah, over. Let's get it. Yeah. Verse 14 again. Mm. But Yahweh forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. by whom the world is crucified unto me mm. and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, mm. nor uncircumcision, mm. but a new creature. Only if you a new creature, you feel me, will any of that profit you. You see? Circumcision nor uncircumcision profit. Huh? Only if you a new creature. And we going strictly into the mentals. Why? Because you can be wicked as all hell and be circumcised. That's why. All right? Let's read it, Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. For henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh, be with your spirit. Mm. Amen. Go to Acts 17 real quick. Acts 17. Acts 17. Acts 17. Acts 17. Let's read 1 through 3 real quick. Acts 17. 1 through 3. Acts 17. Verse 1. Now when they had passed through Am 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 <laughs> Amphipolis and Apollonia. Amphipolis and Apollonia they came to the lop, the lop, what's that? The, the, the Thessalonica. Thessalonica. Were, was a synagogue of the Jews. Showing you that Israelites had synagogues all over the known world, not just in Jerusalem. All over the known world. You feel me? So Paul traveling, spreading the gospel at this point. Come on now. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. Hmm. And three Sabbath days. Three what? Three Sabbath days. One more time. Three Sabbath days. Uh -huh. Reason with them out of the scriptures, open and elegating, alleging, alleging 
that Christ must needs have suffered and raised again from the dead and risen from the dead. And that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Now what Paul doing in the in the synagogues on the Shabbat days? Huh? So this means he keeps Sabbath too. He keeps Shabbat. Again, if we ran this man rap sheet down to you, had you never heard of him or knew him, every Israelite on the planet would be like, I would love to meet that brother one day, man. Huh? He, he was Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. He circumcised, he teach spiritual circumcision, he believe in the kingdom of heaven, believe in the resurrection, believe in the entire Tanakh, and he teach the Tanakh, teach the commandments. You feel me? And he keeps Sabbath days. He keeps Shabbat days. If that's the list right there, who still got a problem with him? Ain't nothing wrong. Everything that we reading about him can be ver verified and validated with the Tanakh, the Old Testament. You see that? Let's go to something else he read about the Sabbath. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4 real quick. Hebrews chapter 4, read 1 through 9 for me, y'all. Hebrews chapter 4, 1 through 9. We just knocking them off. We knocking them right on down. Believe in the Messiah, another one. You feel me? So now you'll see it's a big agenda against the brother. You feel me? And it's largely because the most people repeat what they heard about Paul and believe what they heard about him through sound bites, man. He was a Roman. He was against the Torah. He didn't teach the commandments. Mm. Huh? He didn't want to start all this Hellenization. When we read the scripture, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. He was a stand-up brother for the truth. You feel me? And was the per one of the perfect brothers to convert into the truth, too, man. Because he was what these niggas still trying to be today, a scholar. Perfect brother to convert into the truth. You feel me? Because he's going to go beyond hard. He's a learned man. There's a brother with today would have had all the letters of learning behind his name. Shaul Cum Laude, PhD, Magnum Cum Laude. He had the whole alphabet behind his name. Right. right? You take a brother like that, and them some of the hardest brothers to even break. You can't tell the Negro nothing. He's been learning, he's been learning his whole life. Feel me? He got his doctorate. Been in school 20 odd years. You feel me? So you really can't tell a Negro like that nothing. So for the fact that somebody like that was blinded. You feel me? So he could really see the light. You feel me? Perfect person to convert into the gospel because he going to go hard at it. You dig? So where you at right now, bro? In Hebrews 4? Let's read that 1 through 9. One, Romans 4, 1 through 9. Right, Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. It said, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Mm -hmm. And any of you should seem to come short of it. He said, we need to fear unless we, unless we come short of entering into his rest. Whose rest? Whose rest you talking about? The most highest rest, right? Well, let's see if, that, if that's been fulfilled for us. Let's read. For unto us was the gospel preached mm -hmm. as well as unto them. Mm -hmm. But the word preached did not profit them. Why didn't the word preached profit? Why wouldn't it profit? Let's read my brother. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. See, you can hear something but not really believe it. Not really have a strong conviction about it. Right. See that? It won't profit you nothing. Faith is the key to unlock miracles in your life. Faith is the key. Full belief and don't let nobody play on your mind, Zion. Why I gotta have faith? What you talking about, why? It ain't nothing in life that you can name right now. You ain't gotta have some type of measure of faith. You ain't gotta have some type of measure of faith. Even the atheist, that's a belief. Atheism. An unbelief is a belief. They got things they have a strong conviction about. A strong conviction is a belief of faith. Right? So... They heard the word, but they didn't believe it. The, heard, the word wasn't mixed with faith. So guess what? The word won't profit, didn't profit them, just like it won't profit us 
If we hear the word, don't believe it, it won't profit us. None. Let's read out. Verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest. See? Go ahead. As he said, mm -hmm. as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. My rest. Go ahead. Although the works were finished Ooh. from the foundation of the world. You see that? Look, the rest already been prepared for us. Huh? From the foundation of the world. But only through faith and belief will we enter into. You understand? We got to have the faith and belief. And at that point, you're ready to keep any command that most I give you. You're ready to rock. All right? Because you got that strong conviction. You really believe, you feel me, that you're a servant of the Heavenly Father and you're doing the right thing. All right, let's read out. For he spake in a certain place on the seventh day of this wise. And Yahweh did rest the seventh day from all his works. Yep, that's rest or Shabbat. Which means a cease. Huh? Or a rest. He ended all his works. Let's read Hebrew. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Into whose rest? Into my rest. Go ahead. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some much enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached into not in because of unbelief. Come on. Mm, mm, mm. Come on. Because of because of doubt. Because of disobedience. A lack of faith. Guess what? All the elders died in the wilderness. Yeah. And the youngins got in. See? Unbelief will get you cut off from the promise, man. A lack of faith. A lack of faith is like cancer. It got to be cut out. Let's read up. Again. He limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today is ye were heard his voice, harden not your hearts. Come on. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? Come on. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh. See, there still remains a rest for us. Right? So that means the Shabbat that we keep every week is a foreshadowing for when we will finally rest. From all our hard toil and labor. You can fact check that with Isaiah. You feel me? Isaiah the uh, 14th chapter. When we rest from our hard bondage and rule over our enemies. There still remains a rest for the people of God, man. You feel me? Because if you entered into God's rest, you would be ceasing from your own labors. You would have to get back up on Monday morning and go back to work. You understand? We still ain't entered in. Y'all willing we be found worthy. Let's read out. Verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For he that is entered into his rest, he also have ceased from his own works. That's right. As the, the, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. as the Howard did from his. Yep. If you enter to the Most High's rest, you'd be ceasing from yours. It wouldn't be no more hard labor and toil for you. It wouldn't be no more going to punch the clock on Monday. Right? So the Sabbath that we have is a foreshadowing of when we as a people going to rest from our hard bondage and labor. Right? So the Sabbath you have every week is not the eternal Sabbath that's coming. It's just a foreshadowing of when we'll finally rest of all our hard labor and bondage. We get back to the beginning what it was, right? No hard labor in the image of the Most High, having dominion and rulership over the entire realm. That's what this whole thing is about. Read it, finish it on down to 11, then we're going to jump out. All right, verse 11. Yeah. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. <laughs> huh? You see that? His rest, because he ceased from all his work. Huh? Not you. You get up and go punch the clock Monday. And got the nerd to think you dealing with the eternal Sabbath. That ain't the rest he talking about. It's a foreshadowing of what's coming. Go ahead, Al. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. All right, so Paul even talked about the Shabbat, but gave us a deeper understanding of what was coming. The rest, the eternal rest for the children of God. You do your homework, fact check that with Isaiah 14, 1 through 6. All right, bro, go to 1 Corinthians 5, 79. We're going to show y'all he even taught feast days. 
So far, there ain't nothing wrong with the brother Paul. He talking about the resurrection, the kingdom of heaven. He an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, taught the commands of the Most High, believed in circumcision and spiritual circumcision, believed in the Messiah, observed the Shabbat, taught against sin. What problem you got with this brother? Huh? His pedigree seemed pretty legit thus far. <laughs> Sound like a soldier to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I pray they can dig this up about me after I'm gone. Mm. Huh? So. I pray this on my jacket mm. after I'm gone. And some mumble mouth Negro enemy of mine pop up and, and start spreading madness about me. I pray some brothers that stand up and say, uh-uh, we got his writings. I seen the tape. <laughs> I seen, I seen the, the tape. tape. <laughs> <laughs> no, he 100. Here it is right here. That's going to it. He taught he taught feast days as well, which would make sense because he said in his open testimony, in his open testimony in court, what he say? No, no, Your Honor, I believe in all things written in the law and the prophets. So is it him not believing, or is it that you don't believe in all the things written in the law and the prophets? Because we got so many Negroes free casing this brother. 2,000 years after the matter. Huh? And ain't none of it true. None of it. Most of it would be cleared up if they just kept reading them. They jump, they jump ship, though. Because they've been taught to jump ship. Because you know he's going to bring you right back full circle. We'll take you right back to the Torah and say, look, man, I ain't lying. Look at that. And you're going to have to deal with it. All right, let's read it. 1 Corinthians 5, 7-9. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Mm-hmm. Purge out therefore the old leaven, mm. that ye may be a new lump, Come on. as ye are unleavened. Mm -hmm. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice, sacrifice for us. For so the Messiah, Mashiach, Yahweh Shah, our Passover is sacrifice for us. Passover is a feast of the Jews. Correction. A feast of the Lord. Huh? Passover is the feast of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Right? Now it's comparing the Messiah, Yahweh Shah Mashiach of Nazareth, Christ, to the Passover unblemished lamb. Huh? He's our Passover. He sacrificed for us. Unblemished because his walk was flawless. Huh? Even down to his conception, flawless. His birth, flawless. So he's unblemished. Right? And his blood can atone for us because his blood is righteous. Now, let's read, Doc. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Mm. Let us keep what? Let us keep the feast. So now we got Shaul teaching that we should observe and keep or guard the feast of Passover. This ain't a brother that introduced Easter eggs and bunnies into your psyche. Bowing to Christmas trees. Mm. Fake New Year's. Huh? A Sunday Sabbath, we ain't read that. This brother observed Sabbath. And even said what? Hey, it's an eternal Sabbath coming for us, man. If we don't lose faith. Right. Tribe of Benjamin, kingdom of heaven, believed everything, opening testimony. We got example of him teaching the commandments. Man, y'all giving the man a bad rap, man. Yeah, yeah. All because you lust, huh, to be Mashiach yourself. Why do I have to? I've learned enough Hebrew. Why do I have to subject myself to somebody who possibly was fictitious? <laughs> Man, I know what you Nick Rose thinking. Huh? Evil men have not faith, man. You better pray to the Lord for some faith. You're going to be losing no sleep because you got a problem. You just, I just don't accept every little minute detail. That's your problem, man. You better hurry up. Or maybe you just wasn't called. I mean, I don't understand. You dig? But we know what y'all thinking. You figure if you wiggle about a Paul's writings, you wiggle about him having to follow the Messiah. Oh, we. Dang, dang it. Why these niggas had to pop up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're here to remind you, uh, you ain't got no out. You better hold yourself accountable and be what the scripture calls circumspect. You better dot them I's and cross them T's, boy. Uh, your soul is on the line. Huh? Eternal flames is on the line. 
And we ain't just gonna sit idly by and just watch y'all butcher the man's rights. I mean, come on now. I can see if he was some type of sodomite, or, you know, murderer or something. Man, this man, this man, man was inspired up. by God. Exactly. What he wrote is Christ. Uh, who is the Word? Mm -hmm. uh, it's three that burn record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So you are basically slandering Christ. Mm -hmm. mm, think mm -hmm. about it. Think mm -hmm. about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you milly mouth Negroes think because he said Christ. You feel me? That it's fictitious. You know exactly who we talking about. And I know as soon as he said that, a lightning bolt uh, flashed through your your soul, your chest. Mm. You know how you know that feeling you get, boy? Like lightning just struck you? Hmm? You feel about that small? Hmm? You get to moving over? Mm. Seat smoking? Yeah, I bet. You been blaspheming, ain't you? Huh? Y'all been straight gambling with y'all soul, man, and throwing that deal on the crap table, man. No regard to it. No regard to your soul. All right, where we at, out? Verse 8 again. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us keep the feast. Come on. Not with old leaven, mm -hmm. neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, mm -hmm. but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So he told us, let's keep the feast, but keep it in sincerity and remember the Messiah because he's the unblemished lamb. You feel me? ordained by the Father since the foundation of the world, sitting at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. He's the unblemished lamb by whose stripes we are healed. So let us keep the feast, but be sincere in the spirit, not in the letter. We don't keep the Passover, you feel me, in the letter as instructed like with Moses, blood over the doorposts and all that. You understand? The blood is over the doorposts of our hearts, our minds, man. You feel me? Whose blood? The Messiah. That's why we teach and preach his testimony, you dig? All right, drop the Acts 20 and 16 real quick. So we got him teaching about Passover on a spiritual level. That'll get him uh, preaching or teaching about Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. Kag Shabuah. Hmm? The Feast of Weeks. Ain't that? That's in the Torah, ain't it? Leviticus 23. Let's read this. Acts 20. Acts 20 and uh, I believe it's 16, my brother. Acts 20 and 16. I believe so. For Paul had determined to sail to sail by uh, emphasis, e emphasis, emphasis, yes, sir. emphasis, mm -hmm. because he would not spend the time in Asia, mm. for he for he hasted, mm -hmm. if it were possible for him mm -hmm. to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Did you see him? He this is this after the Messiah resurrected. You feel me? And he was like, look, I'm going to Jerusalem to keep Pentecost. Which is the Feast of Weeks, found in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Right? Which is the seven complete Sabbaths must be complete. And the day after the seven Sabbaths, the 50th day, that's another feast. So he's teaching. So he's teaching. You understand? He's teaching feast even under this order, Melchizedek, a day. Under this law of Christ. We even got feast days. Hmm? But you still mad at the brother, right? And let's go dispel the myth real quick that he was into. Uh, Paul said it was okay to eat, you know, show up at Christmas dinner and eat. Let's go dispel that myth. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 8. Right? We're going to end with 1 Corinthians 8 and 1 Corinthians 10. You feel me? I mean, just real quick. Something real quick to show you. Just like they passed you a pagan... Roman Christ, the Messiah, they did all his disciples the same way. They did all the apostles the same way. And why should you be surprised even if you're non messianic? You Negroes thought Charlton Heston was Moses. Huh? <laughs> you niggas thought Charlton Heston was Moses to about wow. five years ago. Wow. You want to talk all that way? Look, nigga, Jesus white. Nigga, we thought Moses was white growing up. Don't front. Huh? Charlton Heston. Moses, the original Ten Commandments. Well, we all know better, right? So if we can know better that Moses wasn't no lily blind heathen, why we can't do the same for the Messiah? What's the problem? You can't throw shade and be like, well, no, you know, this Jesus, that's Jesus 1492, you know. Huh? 
when we all grew up uh, watching the Ten Commandments with Ewell Brenner, Edward G. Robinson, and Charlton Heston. <laughs> Heathens! Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. They don't whitewash our whole history. So don't front. So let's go dispel this myth right here. We're going to end it. First Corinthians, the eighth chapter. Start at verse one. Huh? First Corinthians 8 and 1. Mm -hmm. Now as touching things offered unto idols. Is this still Paul talking? Yes, it is. This is his letter to the Corinthians. Man, talking about uh, first com uh, commandment number two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have no other God before him and they add making the graven images. Mm -hmm. Come on, brother. It say we know that we all have knowledge. Uh -huh. Knowledge puffeth up. No doubt. But charity edifies. That's right. Come on. And if any man thinketh he knoweth anything, mm -hmm. he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. You hear that? So so kill yourself with all this, you on a pedestal and you know I you know I'm a learned. Mm. I never heard so many self proclaimed scholars in my entire existence, man. Now, I ain't been on the earth that long, but man, these days, everybody's a scholar. Everybody's a priest. Everybody's a prophet. These everybody. Scripts say if you think you know something, you don't know nothing. Knowledge puff it up, man. That's why we say around here we don't know nothing. The more they big you up, the more you remember, I don't know nothing at all. But the Messiah born, crucified, resurrected, and soon to return, man. How about we keep the rap at that? At what point does this not become a pissing contest? Because that's what they want from you. Niggas want to have a pissing contest. And we ain't here to do that. All right, we're here to preach the gospel. I don't know nothing. Let's leave the educated matter to educated Negroes. Let the educated argue over frivolous matters. How about we be about our father's business? Mm -hmm. All right, let's read. Right? Real card. Right, let me hit this right quick. It's, and, and, and trip off this right here in this verse right here. It said, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Mm -hmm. Trip off of that, man. What is the, what is the, the Lord saying all through our Proverbs, bro? The fur of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Huh? So you puffed up. You have no you have no what the fur the creator of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. He know not what he ought to know. You know, okay, you knew all this, but this right here, this is what you should have known. Mm -hmm. You feel me? God. You know what I'm saying? Verse four. It says, as concerning therefore the eating. Of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing. We know, we, us with the true belief, know the idol, the idol is nothing. Nothing, no thing. It doesn't matter. Huh? It doesn't exist. Nothing. Come on, Hebrew. It said, an idol is nothing in the world. Uh -huh. And that there is nothing, no, my bad. And that there is none other God but one. Yeah. For though there be that are called gods, mm -hmm. whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, mm -hmm. but to us there is but one God, uh -huh. right. the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. By whom are all things, and we by him. So, you know, Paul would have been quoting Deuteronomy 6 and 4 as well. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He just said, but unto us is what? Mm. What did he just say? But to us there is but one God, the Father. Mm. Huh? And then what? Of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, or Master. Jesus Christ or Yahweh shot a Messiah. Why he say that? Because who was the Lord at the right hand of the Lord in the heavens as witness in Psalms 110th chapter? Huh? Who was the Lord God and the God that overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah as witness in Amos 4 verse 10 through 12? There's two Lords there. Huh? See unto us, this is, this is the confession right here. Right? That the Messiah is divine as well. He was not no Negro in the alley shooting craps. Huh? He wasn't conceived by move your hand, Mary. That wasn't his mission. All right, let's read, Hebrew. 
It's in verse 6. But to us, there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, mm -hmm. and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom all things, and we by him. Verse 7. How, how be it, there is not in every man that knowledge. Hear that? Every man don't have our knowledge. You see our confession, but every man don't have that confession. Okay, come on, Hebrew. For some with the conscience of the idols unto this hour eat it as if as a thing offered unto an idol. And their conscience be weak in the fire is the fire. Conscience is the fire being weak. It's some people that know that they worshiping a false god. Huh? A lot of our people don't know, but don't take everybody for granted. A lot of folks know. Huh? Think it's a game. Who is Azielia Banks? That broad just came out and said she's been sacrificing chickens in her closet in this witchcraft stunt called Berea for the past three years. Look up spirit cooking. Look up spirit cooking. You'll see the handlers that handle Jay-Z and them. You feel me? And Beyonce and them. Mariana Abram Vic, one of the high priestess of Satan. Right? It's, in other words, it's people that's into this paganism and this witchcraft that know exactly what they are doing. And then you got our people who partake in stuff that don't have, have a clue of what they're doing. Hmm. They know they ain't supposed to be doing it, but they figure they just having fun. They don't know what the hell going on. Collateral damage. Nonetheless, the chicken still is being prepped for the fire. You just being seasoned before you get thrown into the fire. Your ass still gonna be cooked. <laughs> Don't mean you finna get away with it or nothing like that. But it's some folks that know, you understand, that know that they are worshiping the devil. It's some that don't, though. So that's what Shaul just saying here, man. Our knowledge of what we believe ain't in every man. Or some that understand that's an idol and they gonna eat this food as if it's sacrificed to the idol. Yeah. Huh? Their conscience is weak and they are defiled. Why? Why are they defiled? Because they're drinking wine? No, because they're dealing with a false god. Man. So the spirit of the heavenly father can dwell up in his temple. All right, let's read. Right, where you at? Verse 8. Yeah. But meat commandeth us not to God, mm -hmm. for neither if we eat or we the better, mm -hmm. neither if we eat not or we the worse. Right, so you ain't supposed to be puffed up either, because that's just one pagan day in a 365 day calendar year you got 364 more days to bang against sin so yeah our people need to drop that but why are you thinking you better you still got all type of transgressions you banging against so also you think you better because you don't because you don't go to church on sunday no more huh but you still doing something in the wee hours in the throes of midnight what you doing you still doing something you banging with with that flesh? What you doing? So just because you not eating don't make you no better. Just because you not eating don't guarantee you the kingdom either. You got to fight this warfare 24-7, man. So don't start thinking you better than your folks. Or if you, I'm going to be better off because I just stopped. Huh? But there's something else tickling your fancy. There's something else you doing. There's some other war you fighting with this flesh. That guess what? That I have you miss your mark if you don't get it under control. Let's read, my brother. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Come on. For if any man see these which have knowledge. Look at you. You got knowledge of the Lord. Come on. Sit at meat in the idol's temple. You sit down in the idol's temple? Huh? You figure I got knowledge, you know the Lord down with me, man. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna sit on up in here in the idol's temple. Come on. Shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? You see that? Huh? They see you, you a strong brother in the faith, but you sitting over he hawing, slapping high fives. You feel me? At Christmas dinner. You feel me? And it's a young brother that's weak, don't know how to, you know, go and go in and really differentiate and be strong and not worship and do none of that madness. You feel me? Come to drop some script and leave. 
But that showed a strong one. What? He got to be on his P's and Q's too. Wherever he yet, because who watching? Mm. It's the weak watching. You feel me? Brother, they ain't as strong in the faith watching. Hey, I seen Big Bro do that. It must be cool to do that. And now, guess what? He think it's okay to partake in a meal that's dedicated to an idol. A pagan feast day. That's to bring you up to speed. Right. Let's read, Hebrew. 11, verse 11. All right. It say, and through, the, and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish. For whom Christ died. See, he gonna perish because he never let go of that idolatry. Mm. You feel me? You and her sitting down eating, thinking you justified because you got knowledge. Huh? And somebody that's weak see you and be like, oh, it must be cool to do that. And guess what? Now nah, he gonna perish. He gonna die because he figured it's okay because he saw somebody that was strong doing it. Huh? Just like Eliezer on the Apocrypha. He like, man, I'm not finna eat that. I'm not even finna fake like I ate it. Because all them gonna think it's cool to do it. Shaul saying the same thing. Like, watch out, man. Yeah, because you got knowledge. You think you got you a little liberty. You think you can go sit in the idol's temple and eat? What if somebody weak see you? They gonna start thinking, what? It's okay to do that, man. And guess what? Now they got another God before the Most High. All right, let's read, huh? Verse 12. Yeah. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their, their weak conscience, Ooh. ye sin against Christ you your see, you see who you sin against? When you become a stumbling block like that and wound the conscience of that weak brother, you just sinned against the most high and his son. Hmm? Because remember, you're supposed to be an example. You're supposed to be the light. Mm -hmm. You just wounded this little bro conscious with that, man. Sitting in sitting at meat in the idol's temple. Cause you got you a little knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge puff it up. Yeah. Alright, let's read Hebrew. Wherefore, if meat make of my brother to offend, uh -huh. I will eat no flesh <laughs> while the world standeth. Come on. Lest I, I make my brother to offend. You see the mindset we supposed to be That's in? Let's go 1 Corinthians 10. We're going to start at verse 11. Uh, next, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. But you see what mindset we supposed to be in, Israel? If meat make my brother to offend, I ain't eat no more meat. You feel me? If this is a problem, I'm going to put it away. So guess what? We can go ahead and preach this gospel and gain our brother and make him strong. That's how we got to be as a people, man. We got to be willing to put whatever away or out of this sight until he's strong enough to even see it. Just so we can get him strong in faith and not become stumbling blocks. You understand? So thus far, man, look, we reading about the brother. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, taught the commands, kept the feast days, taught physical circumcision and spiritual circumcision, believed in the Messiah, taught against sin, observed the Sabbath, believed in the kingdom of heaven, and believed in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's and close. taught against observing pagan feasts or idolatrous feasts. Thus far, this Hebrew checks out. You feel me? So with that being said, our praises. We'll come back. We'll do another chop session on the rest. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, our praise to the Heavenly Father, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and honor and glory of his only begotten son, who's currently sitting at his right hand, Yahweh Shah. The Mashiach of Nazareth, long live the king. Long live the king. Long live the king. Yahoo. king. And, we, and we got plenty more, man. There's plenty more misconceptions of Paul we're going to clear up. Long live the king. Yahoo. Long live the king. Yahoo. Yahoo.